I think I would start with um, how our, our enemies, you know, our greatest threats are usually not intrinsically evil or bad. They're usually good things gone too far or taken to extreme. And, and unfortunately, when you look at um, the, what's happening in marriage, you've got to get a kind of a historical big picture look. And it doesn't it doesn't revolve around um, the quality of the relationships as much as it revolves around a, a shift of values. And we've had this tremendous shift from where individualism and what we would call collectivism as two sets of values kind of hung in the balance. Collectivism said, it's a good thing to uh, do something for somebody else. It, it's worthwhile to uh, invest time and energy into like your children or to get married and to live for your partner or if you have a problem in your marriage you know it's a good thing to hang in there and work it out and because the collective unit in and of itself intrinsically is valuable to you as an individual individualism said it's a good thing to mature and pursue your own uh, interests and develop your own um, kind of like a personality and enjoy life and, and get your education and, and on and on and on and, and find, find yourself. That's individualism. We would say for a long time in our society, those two values were friends. They, they, were, they were compatible. They hung in the balance. So that the, 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 the voices around people growing up young people in their 20s, on and on and on. The voices around early married people, the voices would oftentimes speak both sides. What happened somewhere from the 60s to the 80s, those values began shifting with individualism becoming much, much more weighty and collectivism breaking down to all of a sudden the scale broke, they separated, and we now live in a very individualistic society with that value, that set of values. What that has done to singles is they are polarized. They live in the, the room of individualism, and marriage is that other room that is risky and it's going to require that, you know, they better really enjoy this room and get everything out of it before they ever go to that room. What it has done to marriages is that it has made the sense that if I'm not happy, if I'm not fulfilled, give up the collective unit, whether it's the children or whether it's the spouse or whether it's what we've done for 20 years, give it up to go find myself. That has become so out of balance that the voices around singles, married people, very often are, are poor guidance. They're misleading. What we need to do is we need to help marriages, help people get ready for marriage. But we really need to go way upstream and help singles from youth all on to see the value of giving yourself and to become proud. You know, we need women to stand up and say, I'm a feminist and I believe in marriage. In fact, you know, there was a time when feminism went too far in individuality, but I am my own person and as my own person, you know, I want a good marriage. And you are going to have to live life right before I commit to you and raise the bar and the standard. If we get people doing that, that's bringing those two sets of values in harmony. And we could really have a turnaround in our society.